to start the day, we come back to our body, and we feel the mind, the body, and we release. Let's take a journey, as I said, I have here the map. So let's start with the talk of today. Are you ready for a little journey, inner journey? Are you ready? Yeah. No, that's not ready. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah, that sounds a little bit better. Good. Okay, so the topic for the session of today is why do you meditate? And I ask you the question, why do you meditate? When we sit to calm the mind, what else? What are, what are the benefits do we get from meditation? Huh? Purifying the mind. What else? What happens to the body when we meditate? It, it becomes calm. It becomes healthy. If the mind is healthy, the body becomes healthy. So actually, there are many, many reasons why we do practice meditation, but there are also many layers and levels. So we can use sometimes the superficial levels, like in our day-to-day -day life, just for a few minutes, or when we want to go deeper. And this is what we're going to uh, be exploring today. So as we saw, our body gets relaxed, our mind is healthy, and we cultivate also some qualities, good qualities of the mind. Concentration, mental stability. Hmm. All these things are very good, right? So why do we meditate? I ask again. Yes, that's what we get, but why? Why did we came today here, for example? What are we looking for? Let's pause for a little moment. Mm -hmm. Why we chose to come here? Practice a little chanting. Contemplate the mind. Mm -hmm. I think... And I think we will agree, we are looking for well-being, isn't it? We want to be well inside and in the body, in the mind. So now I have a question for you. Let's make things clear. Question for everybody. I got this question from my teachers before, and I ask now. Do you want to be happy? Yes. yes. Everybody agree? Raise your hand. Whoever wants to be happy, raise your hand. Everybody wants to be happy. Very good. That all agree. Next question. How much? Yes, we all agree. We all want to be happy. But how much? How happy? Because as you know, mm, there are different kinds of happiness. I have a friend who says, there is some happiness which is so cheap, so cheap, so cheap that you can buy it in the shop. <laughs> it's so cheap that you can buy it. Yes, there is happiness that is cheap. So this second question is very important. Yes, we all want to be happy. How much? And that will define the use of our time and life because to get uh, fast food happiness, it's cheap, but it lasts very little. And what happens? We need again and again and again and again. And that we can consider the sensual pleasure is something that's why they are addictive because they give pleasure for a little while and then they finish very quickly, and then we want to have again. And then we want to have again, and then addiction arises. But what about long-lasting happiness? Are we, do we have the tools to find it? Hmm. We need to have very clear what we want to do, what we are looking for, because the methodology uh, is different. There are different kinds of happiness. And I want to make a clarification who has, that has helped me a lot in the past is recognizing that pleasure and happiness are not synonyms. I repeat again, pleasure and happiness are not synonyms. When we are happy, we feel pleasure, right? Happiness is pleasurable. But when we only get pleasure, it's not a guarantee that we are happy, right? For example, I tell you, in the most de developed, economically developed countries, there is a very high degree of depression. And it's not that the people don't have access to pleasure. They can buy wh whatever they wish. They can get it. Even in this country also, the, the economy is good. We can get pleasures. But why is there people depressed? So many people depressed of so many ages. Even sometimes people thinking about suicide or taking their life. They can get all the pleasures. Why are they not happy? So this is something that we need to keep in mind. Happiness 
brings pleasure, but pleasure is not guaranteed for happiness. So where are we looking for? Let's pause a little bit. How, for example, this past year, now that we are remembering our actions, how did we use our time? Were we working to achieve happiness or just to get pleasure? Let's pause for a little while. I also will think about it. What are we looking for? What are we doing? Mm -hmm. Believe me, it's a reminder for myself. I'm not just telling you. I'm reminding myself. I ask these questions often to me. We all want to be happy. How much? How deep? What kind of happiness? Next question. Our teacher said, do you, I ask you now, do you want to be free? Raise your hand, the one who wants to be free. Yeah, everybody wants to be free. Next question, you know it. How much? How free, right? Different kinds of freedom. Very good question to keep on the mind. Hmm. We already saw that, that there are some benefits of meditation. Our body gets calm, the mind gets peaceful, the mind gets healthier, the body gets healthier. Hmm. We relax, the organs inside, when we are doing Kaya Nupasana, the, or one, the organs relax, the body works better. But when asked to Sayadu Tajania, many of you know Sayadu Tajania, no? So I, I, I was with him and accompanying, uh, assisting him in some retreats. When he was asked any often, Bante, why do we meditate? He was asked this question, why do we meditate? And he said something that I really like. He said, we meditate because we want to cultivate the good qualities of our mind. And I say, wow, that, that's much better. We meditate because we want to cultivate the noble qualities of our mind. Recognize the pollutants, the pollution, whatever makes it dirty or heavy or suffering, we recognize, put aside, and foster the good, the good qualities of mind. Hmm. And then he also said, we meditate because we want to understand. And then when he said the first time, I said, what? We want to cultivate good qualities, I understand, but now we, we meditate because we want to understand. Understand for what? understanding and wisdom to make peace with life, with the conditions of life as it is. Nature is as it is, it arises and passes away. And very often I find in myself that the thing that makes the problem is that I don't accept what is happening. Does it happen to any of you? <laughs> when we suffer, when I suffer, I tell you, when I suffer, I ask the question, what from this suffering what is the thing that I don't accept? Oh, immediately the mind says, oh, you don't accept this. And then the next question I ask, is this thing natural or unnatural? The answer is, oh, it's of course natural, it's happening in life. So non-acceptance, hmm. no having no peace, this is why we meditate. Beyond the relaxation that we get in the mind, we want to develop the good qualities and especially the wisdom who will help us to make peace with life. Yes, we born, no problem, good. We are getting older, no problem, that's natural. Everything that arises ceases, no problem, it's natural. That wisdom is the one that we want to cultivate. And I have to say that if we ask the why we meditate question, to cultivate wisdom will be the crown. There are many benefits from the body, mental qualities, but the highest one, let's remember this one is we cultivate our minds because we want to develop wisdom. Wisdom generates peace. Wisdom generates equanimity. And when the difficulties of life come in front of us, let's say sickness, something gets lost, a business, a relation, or somebody died or something happened, we have enough mental stability and understanding to go forward. Do you think that benefit from meditation sounds, sounds like useful? I think it's very useful. My dear family, cultivation of wisdom is the crown of meditation. It's the best thing we can do when we sit, close our eyes, feel the body, feel our breath, remember the teachings of our teachers, 
and make peace with life. Hmm. I mentioned the word freedom, right? Do we want to be free? Yes. How much? Uh, we are trying to look. Now the question is, freedom from what? This wisdom will free us, right? Freedom from dramas. Somebody here has some dramas running in the mind and choo -choo -choo -choo, all stories, raise your hand. <laughs> I have all stories still running and running. And, oh, next time I see this person, I will tell him this, 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 and that, that. And now that he told me, she told me, oh, like this. Somebody, something sounds similar? Free. Would you like to be free from this? Choo -choo 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 -choo. Oh, it would be like, sometimes when the mind is quiet, it feels like, ah. Oh, Finally, thank you, my dear, thank you. And suddenly, no, but remember, last time she did. And then, shh, getting this quietude, freedom from dramas. Mm, nice. Freedom from negativity. Freedom from anger. What about that one? When the mind is equanimous, cannot get angry. Not possible. You cannot have fire and water in the same place. You either have water and turn off the fire, or you either have fire and, and dries up the water. Cannot coexist. So if we have equanimity, what about anger? Imagine, be free from anger. Somebody would like to do, would like to be? be free from anxiety. Free from worry. Free from stress. Free from fear. Well, my dear family, equanimity, peace, making peace with life and wisdom does that. That is why meditating is so important. Let's keep the focus well so we can get freedom from all the sufferings and the causes of suffering, which is ignorance and attachment. So that will go for it. So we know our goal, we know where we want to go, but now I will invite you to one adventure. Is this gonna get good, ne? <laughs> for this, I will ask you hmm, to uh, take a little moment hmm. It's a very nice moment to, to, to think what we're going to do uh, in this new year. What are our plans? How are we going to spend our time? Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of perspective. But when we want to get perspective, the first thing we must know is where we are now. Do you know where you are now? Not physically, in your life. I ask you. It is a question. Eh? So for now on, I will ask you to put the spiritual safety belts, please. Put them, because we might have a little bit of uh, spiritual turbulences. But don't worry, we are, I, I'm, I, I'm driving the plane, and I know we will, we, will go, we will go through. Don't worry, but please, safety belts on, eh? spiritual safety belts, a little bit shaky. So where are we in our life? Where are you in your life? How to know? It's a good question. Oh, where am I in my life? Mm. So one of the things that will be very good to, to do it's just take a look at nature. And I have one technique that works wonderful to know where am I in life. So I get perspective, then I can start choosing. I want to go to that direction. We know already, mental peace, freedom from suffering, it's clear. How much time do I have? Because I need to plan, we need to know. So for that, let's take a look at nature. As you know, as we know, in nature, everything changes. Like in the year, this past year, no? We have years, well, here in Malaysia, you don't have many seasons because you are very close to the equator. But in Mexico, for example, yes, we do have seasons. We have four seasons. It gets a little bit cold in winter, as you know, hot in the summer, etc., etc. So in one year, just by the changes of nature, we can see different stages. Let's imagine for a little bit that your life, our life, is one year. And if um, all my life is like the size of a year, it also has four seasons. So in average, how many years does a human being uh, live now? Like 80 years, no? What can we say? 80 years average, the human being? So that's easy. We have four seasons. We have 80 years. So 80 divided by four, 20. Four times 20, no? So the spring of our life will be from zero years to 20 years. That will be the spring of our life. Now, from 21 to 40, it will be the summer of our life. Now, from 41 to 60, it will be our autumn. And from 61 to 80, it will be our winter. I ask you, don't, don't tell, don't tell, <laughs> you keep for yourself. 
which season of your life are you? Are you, raise the hand, the one is, that is on the spring? Oh, only oh, two spring, two spring boys, very good. Well, I won't say, I bet, I bet don't say the next one's name. <laughs> okay, raise for summer, no problem. For autumn and winter, we will keep it secret. Okay, raise the hand, the one who is on the summer. Oh, very little, three, four, five, five, yes. And then I will tell you, I'm on the autumn already. So who is in the autumn? Oh, so now we can start seeing where are we in our lives. If we look at nature, what is the spring for? In the spring, eh, it's just joy, everything starts growing, developing. And it, that was our childhood and teenager, teenager time, that was it. We develop. Now, next season, from 21 to 40, the summer, what is the summer for when we see? It's the time that the farmers plant things. They work on the field. They put the seeds and cover them and water them. And then what do the farmers do in the autumn? They harvest, right? So that will be, in general, I'm speaking general terms now, the, the, the rhythm of life is different for all of us. From 41 to 60, that will be time for harvesting. The fruit of the work we did, now already like, ooh, I see some. I, you don't see yourself, ne? but I see many faces like, a little bit there, no problem, no problem. We need to gain perspective. That's why I said we better put safety belts because it's gonna get a little bit interesting. So in the autumn, we need to harvest what we worked already. Sometimes I see, I've seen members of my family in the autumn, they want to continue working in the summer. No, it's autumn already. Now you need to retire. You start, you start collecting what you work. And then what the farmers do in the winter, they get into their cabin, they have their wood fire, they have all the fruits already, and they just consume the fruits that they got. So that will be the winter for a human from 61 to 80, right? So where are you? Where are we? Next question. <laughs> what are you planning to do with the time you have left? That's a big one. We already got perspective. In my case, I'm already in the middle of the autumn. If, I, if everything goes well, uh, there are still such and such decades or years, I ask the question, what are you planning to do? And it's serious. As brothers and sisters, we are here in family, no problem. What will you do with the time you have left? I really hope everything goes well for all of us, and I think it will, mm. because it's cold already. We have home, we have clothing, we have food, we have family, we have teachers, we have friends, access to information, ability to move around. It's well, and we still have time, but we must not, and I, 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 I say this to myself, we must not lose track of the perspective, because do we really want to spend the life we have, many hours a day, scrolling in the phone? I'm, I, I, I do sometimes, eh? But when we have the perspective, ah, uh, yeah, I don't think I will spend so much time because... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> These phones, I, I have to make a warning, it's, they are tools, and as any tools, like a knife, a knife can heal, can open somebody and make an operation, can cook, can sculpt things, but the knife can also kill. So it's not that the phone is bad. I'm not trying to demonize the phones. There is no bad, but like any tool, it depends what intention we use it for. If you have a knife, if you want to do, if your intention is good, you can cook for all your family or even operate somebody and save their lives. But if the intention of the holder is bad, it can kill somebody. The same happened with any tool, like in this case our phone. So let's be uh, uh, careful with it because the phones came into our lives, especially the ones who are in the, in, the, in the autumn, for us that are in the autumn and in the winter, we born without phone. Now young people, they born already kind of with a phone already, mama. 
<laughs> no, but uh, we didn't, and the phone came like a, like a humidity, and now it took over our lives in many areas. Let's be careful. I, was, I try to be careful. I would really encourage you to turn the notifications off so you only check the phone when you decide to. Don't let the, the, the thoughts of somebody else be, uh, yeah, yeah, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, what? I'm, I'm trying to do, uh, yeah, yeah, what? And, uh, I'm trying to do something. So turn their notifications off. And what we do in, in Sasanaraka, they give us only three tickets of 45 minutes of internet per week. So you really organize, OK, I will, I will be very efficient. And then if you can turn the Wi-Fi off sometimes, so you are free from it. You want to see how addicted we are to our phones now? Keep it in the drawer for three days, and you will see. I say, no, I'm not addicted to it. No, I just use it when I like it. No. But then take it for two days. <laughs> or how, how do you feel when it falls? <gasps> My precious, no? Like when it falls to the floor. Anyway, that, that's one, one of the things. Another thing, with the time we have left, do we want to spend it criticizing, quarreling? No, I'm already on the autumn. And I don't have sure if I'm going to live until the winter. Ne? That's if everything goes well, which I think it will be well. But do we want to use that time we have only to seek for pleasure? We already saw pleasure doesn't bring happiness. We need to have these questions, and I will continue to have them. Hmm. Let's stop. And my sincere wish is that we all choose wisely. Time is finite. And something beautiful, my dear family, is to remember that the conditions we have right now are very good. As I mentioned, and we can rejoice again, we have a home, family, food, clothing, medicine, whatever we need. We have a very good opportunity. Let's try our best. To do what? Cultivate the good qualities of mind. And now, OK, the, you, you can. Ladies and gentlemen, you can take out your, your seat belts can be taken off. So now the hard part, the perspective is off. We know where we are. I really wish for all of us to choose well with the time we have left. If you ask me, I think, as the teacher says, cultivating the good qualities of mind, which will be kindness for ourselves, start to talk to ourselves kindly and to the others, cultivate wisdom, love, generosity, service. We know what the good qualities are. We know what the good qualities are, are the bad, sorry, the bad qualities are, and we need to keep them away. So to start wrapping up, let's just make a reminder. How do I cultivate my mind? How do we meditate? I won't go into technique, close your eyes, observe your breath. We already know how to do it. I will go a little, a little bit uh, above the practice, and I just want to remind to all of us what will be necessary. We know the direction we want to go. We have more perspective, and then we want to uh, know uh, as a reminder. The first thing we will know is know what is happening in the body and in the mind, right? So we will need mindfulness, sati. Do you know how is your body right now? Can you feel it properly? From the head, shoulders, chest, abdomen, legs, and feet. Can you feel it now? Yes, I know how the mind is. I can feel the sensation in the chair, the temperature of the skin, the clothes touching. Yes, I know how is the body. Can you know the mind? What is your mind doing right now? Take a look. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and then, ah, paying attention, thinking maybe, listening. The mind is listening. We are also seeing. Even if we have open eyes or eyes closed, the mind is doing, the, we are seeing something, feeling the body. What mental state is in? Hmm. Mindfulness, awareness, sati, that's how we do. Now, if I know how is the mind, uh, how is the body, and I want to do something, but I am very weak, can I do something? Cannot. Then we will need the second ingredient, which is concentration, samadhi. We will need to get, like, like in the gym for our body, we get a, a weight, and then we start doing exercise, exercise, bringing the mind to the breath, bringing the mind to the body, the, the object that we use. We will start doing exercise, exercise, so the mind will get strong. It will have ability to concentrate, and we will use that attention in a line. So the next ingredient beyond mindfulness will be samadhi, cultivation of mental stability. This comes through meditation. So that will be the muscle that will come. Now, we know what's happening in the body. 
We know what's happening in the mind, and the mind is strong. Very good. Now what I do? Now is when wisdom will be necessary. We have the motor is on, we have power, but what is the direction we're going to go? Here is when the development of panya will be very essential. Remembering that everything is changing, remembering that everything is going to pass away, nothing is still there to behold. So we get the courage and start releasing. So we have mindfulness, yes, I know the body and the mind. We have concentration and power, yes, I can do, the mind is strong. And now we use all that force to the crown of the mind, wisdom. We make peace with life. When something negative happens or unpleasant happens, we know it's natural. We keep our connection with our friends and family and we go through the cultivation of wisdom. And for all of these things to happen, morality is essential. If our mind is, is, is worried or restless, all these will fall down. So the practice of sila is a must. The five precepts, as we know them very well, respecting ourselves and respecting others, in short. And also the other good practices, generosity, because generosity helps us to release or relieve the attachment, the source of happiness. Sometimes I have overlooked, to be honest, the, the practice of generosity, but generosity is the antidote to the, sore, to the root of suffering. The, the second noble truth is the root of suffering is attachment, right? What is the opposite? Detachment, the practice of generosity in all the ways, not just in, 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 in things, but also in time, knowledge, presence, listening to a friend that is having a hard time. There are many ways to be generous and it's essential because why? We go beyond ourselves. We are giving, renouncing ourselves for a little while and giving ourselves to the other. Either the thing that I could use, I give to somebody else to use, or the time. So between morality, generosity, wisdom, concentration, and mindfulness, wow, you can bet that all our efforts in the time we have will be good. Lastly, to know from who has practiced meditation here in the past, raise your hand. Let me see, oh, almost everybody, everybody. Now, the last question I want to start ending up is, do we know if what we did in the past is working or not? Do you know? Was, was your meditation effective or not? Oh, sometimes I ask myself, I say, I went to, with Bhante, I went with Seattle Tajania. How to know? I have practiced many years in the past and tried this and that. How do we know if what we did was right? And then he gave a very beautiful, uh, and I will pass you, keep it, keep it in your treasure box. It's a very useful way to know if our meditation is effective. He said, just take a look at four mental ingredients. If these four mental ingredients are growing, your meditation, you are, whatever you're doing in your meditation is, is, is going good. If these four ingredients are not growing or decreasing, even if you meditate a lot, something is wrong. You are not going in the right direction. You can imagine which four. The first ingredient is through the practice of mental cultivation. Am I growing in love? Do I, can I wish sincerely to my, myself and others, may you be well in the body, really. May you be peaceful. The development of metta. Am I growing in loving kindness, being kinder to others? If I'm meditating a lot and not happening, I need to adjust something. Next ingredient, can I recognize the suffering of others? Or just worry about my, me, me, my story, my thing, my, 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 like this. Or, wow, when the mind starts looking, oh, this person needs, I can help, then we go and help. Are, are we growing in compassion, karuna? If our meditation is going well, naturally compassion will increase because we will start feeling beyond ourselves. Our feel will be greater. Next ingredient, mudita, joy in the happiness of others. Are we growing in it? And last one, equanimity. I put equanimity, I call equanimity, this is a personal, how I refer to it, like the door to wisdom. When the mind is equanimous, wisdom can come in and we accept things easily. Are we growing in equanimity and peace? My dear family, next time you wish to check how your meditation is going, check these four qualities. If they are going up or down, you will know. And if somebody else asks you how to know, check, check these things. 
Lastly, today we saw where we are in our, the season of our life. <laughs> I hope I have enough time. We still have time. So, yes, some spiritual urgency. This word the Buddha spoke about is called samvega, spiritual urgency. Whoa, I have no time to lose. Is there here somebody who has time to lose? Raise your hand. I ask again, is there somebody here who want to waste their life? Raise their hand. <laughs> Nobody. One big applause for everybody. Congratulations. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Very happy. None of us wish. We need to cherish it. So there are two forces to make us do something. One is samvega, which is spiritual urgency. Oh, I don't know. I may die before the winter. Eh? Yes, we don't know. We may die tomorrow. So I better use my time wisely. Don't waste it. That is one, which sometimes is a little bit painful. It's like a little bit like spiritual urgency or fearish, like I hope. So I will try to do it. That is one. But I want to give another one that we need to put together. That spiritual urgency needs to come together with pasadi, with tranquility. We can rest. So we breathe in. Yes. Oh. First we say, oh, I, have to, I don't need to waste time. But this tension will not be useful because if I, if I walk like this, how do I look? It doesn't look natural. Né? I cannot do things. If I am like this and if I want to, I want to get the water, not possible. So we need the mind and the body to be free, to be relaxed. So even though we know life is passing, time is precious, we are not so young anymore, no problem. We still have time. The conditions are great, so we relax in the body, relax in the mind, and we can do freely. So, samvega and pasadi needs to go together. Tranquility, no problem. And there is one last ingredient that the Buddha described as a spiritual tool, and this is very important, and that is joy. We had, I see many uh, familiar faces. We had a retreat recently with Ajahn Brahm, isn't it? Who was in Ajahn Brahm retreat recently? Wow, many. Yes. So he speaks a lot of joy. And he's not Ajahn Brahm. Actually, the Buddha spoke about, about joy as a spiritual tool. My dear family, joy and happiness, they are not a luxury. They are spir indispensable spiritual tools because the mind becomes light. The mind wants to try things. The mind is courageous when we are joyful, isn't it? So joy, for example, when the Buddha described in the Anapanasati Sutta, he describes there that we need to develop joy and happiness as a spiritual tool. It's not a, it's not a luxury. Also for the jhanas, you know, uh, vitaka vichara, piti sukha, joy and happiness, is essential for the mind to then concentrate and be brave to let go. So my dear family, how to develop joy? And this is the last note that I want to keep, to keep for all of us. Let's remember all the blessings that we have in this new year. Mm. Everything that we need actually is available to us. We have friends, teachers, Dhamma family, look around. We are here together. We are decent human beings. I don't think none of us here kills or, or do very bad actions. So we can rejoice in our sila. Beyond not harming, we are trying. I have been a recipient of your goodness here and, and somewhere else. So I am, I, am a, I am a proof of your goodness. The monks, we, all the monks, we are the proof of your goodness. And that makes us beautiful. I feel beautiful. Wow. All the words that I'm saying right now, all the energy I have to move the body is because of somebody else's goodness. Imagine how beautiful it makes us monks feel. I would like you to feel the beauty. You are doing it. So we can rejoice, rejoice in your sila. We don't harm anybody. And beyond that, we help some other people. We are decent and uh, as upright human beings. And that, when we see the benefits of our practice, that is the best fuel that will help us to move forward. Not just the fear of aging, not just the fear of life. Forget about that. It's OK. We keep it there. But let's keep the joy. Mm. The joyful effort that we have, we have all the best conditions. Mm -hmm. May we all choose wisely. Let's finish up by remembering our family in this new year. We know what, to be, what is to be done. I'm very gladly surprised coming to this community. Just by chanting, 
I can hear the practice that you have been doing. The pronunciation is quite good, so I'm very glad to see the level of your studies and the level of practice. I'm very nicely uh, surprised. Thank you very much for your sincerity. It's a pleasure that we can speak different, more deeper things sometimes. So we take all this joy. Thank you for the organizers and all the people who have been working for many years for having these facilities and all these programs. Mm. We rejoice in the goodness we have done in the past, the joy and benefits that our practice brings, and we will offer now too for the benefit of our mama and papa. Mama, papa, wherever you are, may you be well and safe. Even if they pass away, may their journey continue in safety and have the mind at peace. If they are alive, we wish them the best. Mm -hmm. We share the blessings of our practice, the joy and benefits from our goodness. We remember our children, if you have grandchildren, and remembering their faces, the joy that sparks, keep it in, keep it in. Remember, it's not a luxury, it's essential for the practice. May they have a safe and long life. May this new year for all of them be prosperous, in health, and with mental stability. We remember our brothers and sisters. I have three sisters. They have one child each. May they be well. I share the fruits of my practice with them. Remember your brothers and sisters. And if there was some difficulty in the past with any of them, we release. It's a good time to release, starting anew. Starting the new year. Nice moment. We remember all our friends and family. Thank you very much for all the support. Mm. May you be healthy this year and many more to come. May you be at peace with life. It's okay. No problem. Now we remember the people with whom we have had difficulties in the past, or maybe we are having difficulties now. I take responsibility from my side. I am sorry for my side. You are responsible for your part. Thank you for the lesson. We continue trying. Here there is no malice, no bad intention, and we release for our own good. May the person or persons we have had problems in the past or are having, may they be healthy, here is their normalis. May they be healthy, they and their families, may they have the mind at peace. We release. Now we remember all the people that we will never meet, millions and millions, some of them with difficulties, some of them with no food, war, mm. homeless. In whichever way we can share the blessings of our life, may all of them be well. Now we remember the people who has passed away in our families and all the people who will die today. May all of them be at peace and their families as well. It's okay, nature is like this, we are ready. And we share the benefits of our practice. In this new year, and many more years to come, may we be healthy and with the mind at peace. Sadu, 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 sadu. How is everybody? Everybody? Do you like the journey we took? <laughs> Was it bumpy at some time or no?
It got a little bit bumpy, you know, with all of the seasons and all that, a little bit, but I, we went through elegantly, I think.